Hey folks, Pete here with the River Kings. I'm out here on the Hall River and I wanna show you five kayak camping secrets or hacks that I've learned over the years that'll make your trip run a lot smoother. not in the order of importance but let's start out with a very important one your headlamp this should be packed in a way that you know where it is at all times and this should be readily available to you at all times this should not be packed down in a bag within the depths of your kayak it shouldn't be down in the boat it should be on your person in a deck bag it should be somewhere where you can grab it and uh, and use it so if you kayak camp for any length of time and especially if you come on one of our trips, you're gonna come across situations where the day doesn't end in the afternoon. The day is gonna continue on the water, off the water, sometimes into the night, and you're gonna want a headlamp readily available. You're gonna need to be able to signal people with it. Obviously, you're gonna be able to need to shine the light if you're getting out and walking. You may be paddling on the water till after dark. We've done this many times. Campsites don't always present themselves where you think they should, and sometimes someone's in the campsite other times, the day just took longer than you thought. Don't compound your problems by having this buried in your kayak. Oftentimes you want to have the ability to get down into the kayak to find it. If you're out on the water, you don't want to go digging through your kayak finding gear because anything you're rooting around has the propensity, has the chance to get in that water and disappear forever. So keep this handy. If it's waterproof, you might consider it putting in your PFD pouch. If it's not waterproof, you should probably get a waterproof one, at least a water resistant one. If you don't want it here, keep it in a deck bag, keep it in a bag behind a seat that's carabinered in. Keep it somewhere you can grab it. That's tip number one. Okay, hack number two, all about keeping yourself organized. This is my cordage bag. And in this bag, I have all manner of cordage, ridge lines, all kind of other stuff. I have four ridge lines in here, several lengths of 15 foot cord. Uh, with a little S-beaner for hooking tarps up. You don't have to use S-beaners if you don't want to. All that aside, you need to have a way to get all these individual cords in and out of the bag really quick without having them be tangled. And this little way of wrapping them is a little hack I learned years back. No tangles. All right, so it's basically 100% ready to go within a second. Let me show you how I wrap this up. So I usually start with the S-beaner side because I don't want to wrap that side later. Just put it in your hand as such. Wrap over your pinky, over your thumb, over your pinky, over your thumb, and just keep doing that all the way down the line until you got about, you know, 15 inches of tail. Then pinch it in the middle, take that coil off, and after you do that, you take the rest of your running end and you start wrapping it around itself all the way up till you have about an inch left. You see that little loop? That's where we started. You put that little running end or the tail through there and you pull down on the one that cinches it up. And it's like magic. That'll stay in your bag, it'll stay in your boat. I wrap my, my tow ropes up like this. Any kind of length of rope I need to wrap up, I wrap up like this. And to get it out, you simply pull on that little guy and just pull the coils off and you can just throw it. 100% ready to go, no memory, no twist, always ready. And it just takes a second to wrap up. Again, put one end between your thumb and your pointer finger, kind of pinch it there over your pinky, over your thumb. It'll kind of hold itself after a couple wraps. And you just wrap that all the way up so you have a little tail. Pinch it and wrap itself. Save the last little bit, go through that loop you got there. Find out the one that's gonna cinch it tight, pull it down, real clean. And just show you what else is in here. That's uh, one of my long ridge lines. I use it all the time. That's Amsteel, it's like an arbor rope. About 2,000 pounds tensile strength on that. There's about 40 feet of it there. Cam jam, my little S-beaners. All that stays in the bag. I can bring any of this stuff in and out. I can dig to the bottom of this bag and pull out 
any other piece of rope. See, I got a bunch of them. Just so you, you don't think I'm pulling out all the same ones. They're all in there. They're all tied up. You're always organized. Best tip number two, keep your lines organized. All right, tip number three, super simple, super fast, requires no gear, requires no skills. Just a little common sense, but you would be surprised how many people don't do this. You just need to do this. When you get to camp and you find your spot, your hammock spot, your tent spot, you love it. Doesn't matter how much you love it, look up. If there's a dead tree or a big dead branch or I don't know, a sheared off 40 foot piece of pine tree hanging by a couple of shreds and a little branch, waiting for the next big wind gust to take it down, you should probably not set your stuff up under that. I probably need to move your tent. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I think if y'all just picked your stuff up and drug it to here, you'd be better off. <laughs> so that's tip number three. When you get to camp and you're setting your stuff up, take a look up, take a look around, make sure you're not tying off to dead trees, make sure the tree above you is not dead, make sure there's no big dead branches waiting to fall. Be smart. Okay, tip number four. This one is probably gonna be less interesting to all you guys, but it's probably the most important thing I can tell you to keep your trips running smoothly. And it's a philosophical way of approaching your trips. It's called criteria-based decision-making. So you would not believe how many problems this solves if you apply this doctrine to your trip planning and your trip execution. And so what basically I'm talking about is all the decisions that have to happen on a trip most of them will make themselves if you have a trip doctrine, if you have criteria in place that you're trying to achieve. So on all of our trips, we approach it as a mission style trip. We're going to accomplish something. And that brings in criteria-based decision-making. So in other words, to accomplish these goals, certain criteria have to be met along the way. And everyone buys into that criteria before the trip starts. So now all the decisions are making themselves. Quick example. Say we have 150 miles of river to do and five days to do it in. That leaves us 30 miles a day. So we all know we have to paddle 30 miles every day and we'll, we'd like to be a little ahead, but we don't wanna be under because we're getting behind. Well, we'll wake up early, we'll make our 30 miles, will we make more? That's just based off how we feel that day. But everyone knows we're going to make 30 miles and then camp. Sometimes that 30 miles comes at four or five in the afternoon Sometimes the 30 miles come after dark because you've encountered difficulties, problems, delays along the way, or maybe just stopped and ate too many hamburgers. This can also apply to where you're gonna camp. Our criteria for a campsite is away from the beaten path, secluded, back country, not developed, no human interaction, island if preferable. All these things are things we're looking for. And then when we get there, it's an easy decision yes or no, it'll be mostly based off, is it covered in poison ivy or is it unattainable or are we just not feeling it as a group? That leaves some room in for the group to make decisions together, but everyone's kind of on the same page. You don't wanna be one guy in left field, one guy in right field and trying to come to decision-making process together on that, on the trip, it needs to be sorted out before the trip. So establish your criteria, what you're gonna do each day, what you're looking for a campsite, maybe when we're gonna get off the water each day. It can be any criteria you want. Just make sure everyone on the trip is on board with the criteria, is aware of them, and has agreed to them, and the trip will run a lot smoother than if it's just everyone's different expectation coming into a particular day or a particular trip. It can get a little tricky that way. And when you do all this, it takes a lot of the emotions and a lot of the feelings out of play. We all get tired, we all get hungry, we all just want to stop paddling sometimes, but we all know we need to make that 30 miles. We're all going to keep going. Once you give into the thought of, well, we wanted to make 30 miles, but I'm just not feeling like it, or maybe he doesn't feel like it, or maybe they want to go 60 miles and I only thought 30. A lot of emotions, a lot of different sentiments can start happening. Just keep your criteria in place, execute the trip based off that criteria. And I think you'll find it runs pretty smooth. All right, that leaves tip number five, and it's actually a skill. And it's one that most people, they don't practice, but they do this every time they go kayaking, sometimes several times a trip, several times a day. Getting into your kayak, what's the best way to do this? 
I have seen every method under the sun attempted at this. Now I'm not gonna say there's a right way and a wrong way to do this, but let me show you the right way. So obviously there's no more stable way of getting into a kayak than if it's sitting firmly on the ground and you just simply get in, no balance needed, no chance of tipping. And most whitewater boaters do employ a seal launch technique where they do that on the ground and then slide into the river. Where you have problems with that is if you're in a keeled boat, if you're in a really long boat with no rocker, you start getting really tippy as the bow gets into the water and it's trying to float and the stern is up on the land on a keel and you have no point of balance except this little razor thin piece of plastic and you dump over it. I know you've seen the videos, you've probably done it yourself if you've tried it. So getting in the water with part of your boat on land, part of your boat in the water can be dicey. Another problem with this is that a lot of banks will introduce boat abuse, concrete boat ramps, oyster beds, jagged rocks. Just sometimes if you have a really pretty boat, especially if you have fiberglass, you just don't wanna do this anyway. So let me show you how to get into your boat the simple, easy way. I do it when I'm touring almost every single time and it involves getting your whole boat into the water and then getting in really simply. Okay, the first thing you're gonna do is kind of hold the paddle with the inside hand, not the outside hand. And you wanna kind of put one hand on either side of the cockpit, like this. And you're gonna step over this boat like you're getting on a horse. One little trick is to put your foot behind the seat so you don't drip water all where you're sitting, because then you have a wet butt. But step over it and you're stable. The last thing you want to do is try to get one foot or the other in right now because that destabilizes. What you want to do, step two, is get your butt down in that seat as quickly as possible. So you just sit down in the boat. I'm not even all the way in the boat and see how stable I am. I could paddle like that, but if I want to sit down in the boat, maybe rinse my feet off. Super stable. And then one leg, then the other. I'm in the boat. It doesn't get any easier than that. All right, one more time from the other direction. Paddle on the inside arm, hold the cockpit, hold the cockpit. Get the mud, sand out of your feet. Over the back of your boat, sit down to your boat. Rinse your feet off. Put your legs in the boat. Sit up. Okay, so that's tip number five, how to get into your boat the safest, easiest, most stable way possible so once again i'm pete with the river kings i hope you found all this useful try these out on your next kite camping adventure and i bet it runs a lot smoother see you next time